Every single year, my DMs blow up with people asking how and if they should sterilize their potting soil, whether it's for a seed starting mix or just simply potting up houseplants indoors. And so today's video, I dug into a little bit of literature that is out there concerning sterilization and seed starting specifically. Now this goes for both sterilizing the seed as well as sterilizing the soil because Shockingly enough, there is a little bit of research that's been done on potting soil being sterilized, but most of it's actually done on the seed side. So let's get into it. So the three reasons for why you would sterilize either soil or seed would be to obviously reduce disease. And this comes in the form of fungus, bacterial issues, you name it. The other reason would be for pests. So things like fungus gnats, the rips maybe in some cases, and then the Third reason is going to be improved germination success. So sterilization of either seed or soil can in some cases actually increase the germination rates of your seed. Those are your three reasons to do it. Three reasons why you may choose not to do this. Number one is that typically speaking, if you're getting your seeds from like any sort of company, they'll be sterilized when you get them. So to re-sterilize your seeds doesn't make much sense unless of course you've stored them incorrectly or it's from like a seed trading program, that sort of thing. The other reason you may choose not to sterilize your soil in particular is because from the store, those seed starting packages you will notice don't have any holes in them, unlike the potting soil, which usually does have holes in it. And it's because that is a sterilized mix already. And so we don't want a lot of outside movement into the package. So that may be the other reason you choose not to sterilize. If you're reusing potting soil, or if you very simply have, are storing unused seed starting mix, if you've done it correctly in the right way, meaning you haven't left it heavily saturated, you didn't leave it super exposed, you had it kind of in a rubber made, everything was sealed up, then that's a reason why you would not want it to sterilize as well because it's very likely that you took it from one sterile environment and you placed it in another sterile environment. So this is just to, to re-sterilize it is useless to you. And the third reason is if you are into organic practices. So to be totally honest, I think sometimes as gardeners, we push the realm of what's truly considered organic. I used to work with a lot of inoculants and while you may think inoculants are organic, they technically are not organic. So mycorrhizal fungi, dobium bacteria, those are not always necessarily organic because of the process that those two bugs, for lack of a better term, have to go through in order to be safe for you as a consumer to use. So there is some sterilization that has to take place. Now it can come in the form of radiation in some cases and don't freak out. That's like totally, it's totally normal. It's healthy and it's not going to hurt you. That's one way that it can be done. It can be done through steam and it can also be done just through heat treatments in like a kiln, that sort of thing. So that's just something that naturally happens because when you're mucking around with bacteria and fungus, harm still, harmful stuff comes with that. So if you are into, you know, you really truly want to follow the rules of organics, then sterilizing your soil via microwaves or any sort of chemical version of it obviously is not going to work in your favor. That yeah, so that would be the reason for why you may also not want to do this. Now, like I said, there isn't a lot of meta analysis when it comes to the whole sterilization of potting soil, but there are a few studies or a little know, research trials that have been done and published. I mean, they are published articles, but there isn't, you know, a really comprehensive look, but we will discuss the studies that were published and kind of the ins and outs of what's going on there. In 2022, a study was done called the effects of soil sterilization on seed germination and seedling growth of the basian. This was done as a randomized design with three different replications, 50 pots 
per replication. The sterilization method was via autoclave. Now the results can be split into two separate categories. The first one being germination and then the second one being the plant's performance as an adult. So during the germination process, both the sterile and non-sterile soil both were 100%, meaning it didn't actually make that much of a difference when it came to germination. Where we began to see a difference was actually in the chlorophyll. Plants grown in the non-sterile soil actually had 158% more chlorophyll. So this actually shows that there's a superiority of non-sterilized soil compared to a sterilized soil. I'm going to do a separate video on chlorophyll because chlorophyll is something when you can increase it in a plant, it just has a down trickle effect of benefit. So Cole's notes on why you want more chlorophyll simply comes down to the fact that chlorophyll is responsible for photosynthesis. And the more photosynthesis taking place, the better your roots, the better your biomass, the better your fruits, all that sort of stuff. And it can be increased not only obviously through non-sterile soil, but it also can be increased in other ways. So I'm gonna do a whole video just just on chlorophyll increases. In 2017, there was another study called the standardized method of high thorough output of sterilization of an aberbanalsis seeds. They used two versions of sterilization agents. Number one was actually bleach and the second one was chlorine gas. So the bleach was considered the liquid phase sterilization and then the chlorine gas was considered the vapor phase sterilization. Now this study is not specific to the soil. It's specific to the physical seeds themselves. So they actually exposed the seeds to either the gas phase or the liquid phase for different periods of time in minutes. So the result of this was that none of them really had a decrease in germination or an increase in germination when this was done. But what they did say is that the bleach variation of this, which was 50% bleach, 50% water, and I wanna, I wanna say it was 10 minutes, Yes, 10 minutes in that liquid phase solution did increase germination rates 20 to 30%, but they did say, they very, I'll read you exactly what the study says. Bleach sterilization is recommended for lines with lower germination potential due to the small, alibet non-significant improvement to germination rate compared to the gas sterilization. So what they're saying is that if you have a known low germination rate type seedling, maybe you have some old seeds or you notoriously have issues with the same company all the time, not germinating properly, this bleach solution did show a slight slight, not even really reportable level of increased germination rates. So is it worth it 10 minutes of your time? Maybe it is. It's up to you, be your own garden scientist, figure out if it's something that you wanna take the time to do, but it's interesting nonetheless. And as always with all of these, it's highly dependent on the seed. So you can tell with both of these studies, they named a very specific plant seed that they were using because that's what science is. You gotta remove as many variables as possible. So unfortunately, you can't just do a crash course in every possible seed in, in their bank. They gotta focus in on one seed, one soil type, and you know a handful of different variations when it comes to the sterilization. So are these results gonna vary depending on the seeds you're dealing with? very likely, highly likely to change things around. This is where soil and plant science, it's like fun, but it's not fun because of that level of variability. It's hard, it's very difficult, I will say. Greenhouse settings, slightly easier, slightly easier to do trials. It's even easier if you have access or funding for the actual like incubator rooms, I'll insert photos of kind of what that looks like, but they're grow rooms completely sealed off and you can really play with the climates that the seeds are exposed to. So there's that version, that's probably number one. Number two would be like a greenhouse, research greenhouse specifically, where you can control separate rooms. Three would be like a big greenhouse where you don't have separate room control for like air, humidity, that sort of thing. And then the worst case scenario, which is what a lot of people have to deal with, in both private and public industry is like outdoor field trial. And that is a nightmare to really get super honed in accurate results, but 
it's still valuable because the variations that they are exposed to, while it may give you different results every single year, it does help you with the nuance of practically applied science versus theoretical or hypothetical applied science, if that makes sense. Because let's face this, we're not all growing our gardens in very expensive sealed off room thingies. And that's what they're called, sealed off room thingies. So if you're convinced that your soil has some sort of fungal, bacterial, or pest issue that you need to take care of, there are four forms of sterilization. Number one, if it is a fungus gnat issue or a critter issue, I want you to find a nematode that will take care of said bug. Fungus gnat, get a nematode. That is the preferable version because then you don't have to deal with trying to resaturate your peat. Because if you didn't know, peat becomes hydrophobic when you dry it out. And the reason for that is because if you ever seen like a Pantene Pro V commercial where the hair looks like it's like split at the ends, well, that's what peat does. And that allows for little air pockets to kind of sit inside. And so it just kind of floats on the water. It doesn't get saturated. When peat is fully saturated, kind of all those little ridges lay down nice and it's like a log and it sinks to the bottom. So once we heat it up, everything kind of expands, let's go. And now it's a big floaty device. So it takes time to re-saturate this. Obviously you've killed off your beneficial microbes. And while potting soil isn't particularly microbe heavy, rhizospheres in general have microbes. So I think you could probably argue that totally sterile soil is not the best. So I would encourage the nematode approach first and foremost. Now the next method is the oven method. And while I do not sterilize my seeds, I had to look up what this is and how this works. So you can preheat your oven to 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. 82 to 93 degrees Celsius. You don't want it to get too hot that it could destroy the soil structure. You wanna place the seed starting mix in a safe container or baking tray. You can lightly mo moisten the mix, not soaking it, just enough to make it damp to help retain some heat. You cover it with a tray or aluminum foil and you bake it for about 20 minutes. You wanna make sure it does not exceed 200 degrees Fahrenheit and then you want to obviously allow it to cool before you use it. I've seen this done and I've seen a lot of people start fires in their kitchen. So I don't know, use that one with caution if you choose to go that route. This is the route that I have used in the past when I have suspected issues. If I've smelt a bag of soil and I'm like, oof, that don't smell right. Or before I really started using or before nematodes were just randomly available on the shelves because shockingly enough, you know, 15, 10, 15 years ago, when I was helping my grandma garden, that wasn't a thing. So steam sterilization was what I very popular, very popular method. So you can put your soil into a a container and then you can put it on heat and you just let it boil for 30 minutes or you can put it inside of a kind of a tray with water underneath and you allow the steam to radiate through for about 30 minutes. The way I've always done it is just you put it in the container like you fill up all your cells and then you take warm water and you pour it onto or hot water, boiling hot water, onto the actual soil. It actually increases the rate in which everything becomes hydrophilic in a way, not hydrophobic. And it also is very effective at just killing a bunch of stuff off because it's boiling water. So that one's probably the easiest, the funnest one to me. And then you can also do microwaving. You don't want it to exceed 180 degrees Fahrenheit and you want to do it one to two minutes. And with all of these methods, except for maybe the hot water method, if you're doing the oven method, if you're doing the microwave method, you have to do it in small batches. You don't want to just do a big batch all at once because at the center and the outside, like everything's going to be treated differently. So you want it very even, similar size, so it heats evenly and it does its job evenly. That's all I have for you guys on soil and whether or not you should sterilize it. If you want 25 tips, very rapid fire tips, science-based tips on seed starting, you wanna check out this video right here. And that is what Google says you should watch. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.